Hey, what's up, Blackball Joe here. Today we're gonna to discuss the 2021 documentary film, Clerk. So this is an hour 55 minutes long. This basically gives us the origins of Kevin Smith's interest in filmmaking up to present uh, filming for Jane Silent Bob Reboot, which is 2019. So we go from early 90s in regards to him, you know, leaving a videotape for his parents before going off to Vancouver for film school in, what, 92 or something like that, up to 2019. We cover a lot of stuff. And it's got heart, it's emotional, he, he, there's tears from me and the interviewees multiple times. Like, watching the movie marathon we've been doing, the, the marathon, well, it's involving TV shows as well, the cinematic universe marathon that we've been doing the view skew universe as well as the jay and silent bob universe um when i and i said this a few times when i first started this marathon i didn't expect to get so emotional watching these projects i just saw some of them in passing and like you know laughed and knew there were comedies and buddy comedy films and stuff like that i did not think or realize how much emotional levels and depth that there are to these projects, where they come from, things of that nature. I didn't know Kevin Smith's brother is gay. So a lot of these types of things that I've noticed within regards to championing for uh, tolerance and equality and love and acceptance throughout the projects, didn't think they would come from a personal perspective. And it's just very cool seeing the behind the curtains bit, seeing the, you know, how somebody is the way they is. How he, how Kevin first started to get into movies because his dad would take him to matinee showings on Wednesdays, you know, take him out of school just to go to the movies, um, things, and the introduction of him, you know, go, just taking us a tour around his town where he went to elementary school, where he went to high school, where he went to the community center, where he met all his friends who then got the comic book men TV series as well as the podcast where he met Jay Muse as well, and he didn't like Jay at first because Jay was younger than all of them. Um, but they would all hang out at the same community center. And then eventually, you know, they became closer. And, you know, Kevin wrote the character of Jay for Jay for Clerks. And then we get the introduction of him into the film worlds that premiering at the Sundance Film Festival or the Keynes Film Festival, whatever, whichever one that was. Um, and then the highs and lows of Make a Project, Mole Rats right after Clerks, which didn't do well at the box office, but then did quite well within the cult fandom, a uh, cult classic film. You then have Chasing Amy after that, which was quite popular with regard to audience and then uh, critics, then dogma and things, right? It just, you then have the lows of the career. You then have the highs of the career. You then have him jump, jumping from different genres. Like why did he randomly start to, uh, how did he get into horror with, with Tusk? A wild, crazy film that that is. Did we talk about Tusk? That came out 2019, I think, 2018. I don't know if we ever talked about Tusk. Justin Long is in, is in it. He is transformed into a human walrus. Wild. Absolutely wild film. Um, it's just neat watching the story. And going to 2018 when Kevin had, a, had that massive heart attack. And he then posted from his hospital bed the next day. And then things changed. And his daughter Harley Quinn suggested him try a vegan diet. And he lost 50 pounds, you know, very quickly. And then has been eating vegan for quite some time. And I remember, I remember this because I started to eat vegan June 4th, 2017. I just had my seven year anniversary. It's still wild to me. It's been seven years. Um, I've been eating vegan for seven years. And so when he had his heart attack in 2018, I was a year into it. And then he start he like announced that he's gonna try to eat vegan and like showing progress pics and everyone was like, Oh my god, he lost so much weight so quick. How does he do it? And I'm like thinking to myself, well, like when I first started eating vegan, I myself lost so much weight. It's one of those like you cut out the curds in whey, so the brain thinks a little clearer, but then also like, you know, the body detoxes. It all the stuff, the animal product that you don't need in the body, gone, right? And of course, Everybody's body is different. Everybody's body processes things differently. But there's been numerous studies, numerous documentaries on plant-based diet versus meat diet, omnivore diet, meat and plant-based diet. You don't need the animal products for sustainability, um, for betterment, for health. So it was, it was very cool seeing him then 
post these progress things. I remember he posted a, a picture of him and um, Jay, Jason Mewes doing yoga and how much weight he had lost and how baggy his shirt was, you know, and he was a very large man at one point. So it's, it's cool. And, and one of the, one of the interviewees said something like, you know, I don't think Kevin realizes how much he's helped people, not just within regards to film, not just in regards to artistic director direction in regards to cinematography, but in regards to health and well being as well, mental health, physical health. It's just cool seeing somebody be so influential without trying. He just is who he is. And that's all we can ever hope for. That's all we can ever ask for him. And it's neat seeing the stepping stones, the cornerstone, milestone moments of highs and lows throughout his life, throughout his career, being summed up within this hour and 55 minute project. You know, him is stating that he didn't really have any interest in weed up until he worked on Zack and Mary Baker porno and Seth Rogen introduced it to him. And so how that started about Zack and Mary was what, 2008, something like that. Wonderful film. It's just cool. It's cool seeing the peek behind the curtains bit. I liked it. I normally don't like documentaries. Documentaries I find to be informative rather than entertainment. I myself prefer entertainment over information via watching something. Information I prefer to read on my own terms rather than have it explained. I like to come to it and read the, oh, this article corresponds to this fact and things like that, right? I want to see it and the notes and stuff. I don't need to like, nah, sometimes I'm an audible listener as well as a visual listener. I got to retract that bit, but I'm not a big fan of documentaries because it's just informative stuff. It's not entertainment stuff, but this I felt like was different that it was yes, informative in regards to this individual's personal life, but it was also entertaining because I know certain things of the the quick stop groceries that is the main staple of the BUSQ universe, you know, how that came about. I know that they built a facade for Jay and Silent Bob Reboot in Louisiana, that it's not technically the same store that they normally film, which is in New, New Jersey, but then majority of the clerks aspect of it is in New Jersey. So things, right? It's just, it's neat knowing certain things in regards to film trivia or whatever, but also seeing the actors and actresses that he's worked with over the years give their interviews. I, I liked seeing that from a entertainment perspective because they then talk about their experiences. So yes, it was an informative documentary, don't get me wrong, but it was a very personal bit. It was entertaining because it was very personal. So I felt more connected to the material because I feel like I'm watching a friend kind of a thing, just do his thing. How he went from movies to then TV to back to movies to podcasting to a bunch of other stuff, merchandise, things. Incredible. Absolutely wonderful. I really enjoyed this project. Um, it's not technically a fictitious story with Jay and Silent Bob. That's how we, we started this marathon with the intention of just watching all the Jay and Silent Bob projects, right? But then as the stories progressed and more emotional stuff kept coming up within me realizing my own self, but then watching characters and actors progress throughout the, the years, throughout the decades of projects. I was like, you know what? We're going to throw some other things in the mix, mixing into this vast universe of Kevin Smith property. We're not going to, we're not going to watch every directed Kevin Smith project, every, uh, how do I word this? Every written Kevin Smith project as well. We're gonna we're gonna focus on the the stuff we've been watching the the Jay and Silent Bob the Clerks you know we still have Clerks three to watch there's the the Jay and Silent Bob Magnus Dopus uh, that I want to watch as well that's a behind the scenes the making of the reboot which is like an hour and a half long I really want to watch that so we're gonna we're gonna watch it there's like some Clerks shorts I have to find on YouTube we're gonna watch those as well we're knocking it down so it's it started out as a Jay and Silent Bob marathon. It turned into a Jay and Silent Bob slash View Askew production marathon and throwing clerks now in the mix as well because I honestly was not aware that there are various other clerks projects um, within regards to the clerks characters. So how is the clerks shorts going to be? We'll find out. How is clerks three going to be? I hear it's very sad because it's a final moment. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see.
Clerk, 2021 documentary film. Very well done. Very emotional. On to the next review. Mahalo.